Hello and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of the legendary Mies van der Rohe. It's a nice sunny day here in Chicago and today we're going to look at for a case study the Grand African Museum by UN Studio. This was a design competition and let's scroll down here. So here you see a view from the top where you have these, I'll call them lofted forms and in the lofted forms you have this pattern, this triangular pattern. So we're going to make something similar using Grasshopper and Weaver Bird and here's a nice slide here so you see some 3D printed massing studies and this is something that my students and I will do semester after semester using a plaster printer. This is a an old printer, it's a Z Corp. I think it's a 450, Z Corp 450. It prints with plaster and binder. It it, uh, it has a really nice texture and the resolution is super high quality on it. All right, before we jump back in the tutorial, if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the little bell to get all the notifications. So we've reached a milestone here. We've reached our 6,000 subscribers. So we're past 6,000 subscribers. So thank you all who have subscribed. Looking forward to reaching 7,000. Also connect with me on Instagram at my first name Alfonso underscore my last name Peluso. Looking to get some more followers followers here. See what I'm up to at school. School starting uh, in a week or week or so. So you'll see more videos from me and and more posts. Also today we're going to be using a little bit of Weaver Bird, and I have a Weaver Bird tutorial that I'll reference and uh, I'll put a link to it at the end of this video. Alright, so let's see what we have here. I think what's really interesting about this is that it's made from... I'm just gonna close this. Alright, I'll do this. Okay, so it's made by uh, or made from a bunch of triangles. Just some closed and planar so there's no curvature in here. These are flat triangles that that make this form. So I think that's pretty cool. Starting with some triangles. All right. So let's uh, let's do that. Let's let's redraw basically everything that that you see here. Okay. We'll get rid of this. Get rid of this. Okay. So here you see our little outline of you know not much not much to it to make that, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and change this back to wireframe. All right, hide my plane. Okay, so let's let's do this. So if you're wondering what scale I'm working in, if I look at a top view here, let's see what each one of these grids is. So if I go to DOC, we'll see that I have grid lines every 10 feet and major grid lines every 10 minor so 10 of the 10 so every 100 feet so and I only have 10 total so and my snap spacing is 10 so everything is 10 bunch of 10s alright so this square here is 100 feet so not a big deal I'm gonna type in the command polyline and what I'm making sure is that my persistent close, the default is no. I'm setting persistent close to yes. Okay, and I'm just drawing, I'm going to draw a bunch of flat right now, closed triangles. And you see when I, and I'm making sure that I snap to the uh, edges of the previous ones. That's, that's going to be really important. You'll see that. So I'm just, I only have to make one, two, three points to make these triangles. So I'm just kind of going around here. They can be different sizes. 
So maybe this one is a little bit bigger. All right, so just making some triangles. Make some smaller ones. Guess they don't always have to go, um, you know, to the outside edges. All right, so let's keep going here. And I guess I'll draw some more later. I think it's good to see that we can add to this. Okay, so now if I look at this in a perspective view, if I select everything and then I use my F10 key or the command points on, that turns all the points on. And what's important is there's many points right here at this one location. There's a point for each one of these triangles. So for that, I'm, I use a window selection to select all those points. And then at the bottom of my screen, you see my gumball is turned on. And I'm going to go ahead and raise that. Okay, so I've raised that up. How high? I don't know. I can always come back in here and change that. All right, so I'm not, if I look at this in a front view, I've lifted this straight up. Okay, so I'm not lifting it on an angle, and you'll see that. So front and right view, it's both straight. Okay. All right, and then what I can start to do is I can start to define some of these points as being on the ground as support, and some of these points being lifted. So I'll go ahead and lift this one up, and I'm using a window selection. And it comes down, meets the ground, Basically every other one I'm going to lift up, comes down, meets the ground. We'll see where we end up. Lift this one up. So we're creating these, this three-dimensional pattern. Lift this one up. Okay. Let's see what we have here. All right, so we have this three-dimensional folded, folded shape. And as I mentioned, we'll, we'll add to this. Okay, so we're going to bring all those curves into Grasshopper. So we're going to use a... We're going to use a curve container. Okay, so here's our curve container. And I'll right-click and I'm going to choose Set Multiple Curves. And I'll select all of them. Okay, so those are in Grasshopper. You see we have eight of those. Let me bring my bifocals down so we can see the names of these. Okay, so the, those are the curves. Okay, so we're going to be copying and scaling those curves. That's the first thing that we're going to have to do here to get... So this will be the bottom of our shape that we're lofting. And then I want the top, which I'm going to copy up in the Z and then scale inward on itself. Okay, so I'm going to use a move. Okay. So you see right away that that makes a copy in the Z. Okay, and we're going to need a height for that. So once I put in a height, because at the moment there's a default of 10, you see it says 0, comma, 0, comma, 10, 10 in the Z. So once I add a Z, or once I add a value, actually, I'm going to need this Z vector. Okay, so let's put a number slider. I'm going to put 25 because that gives me 0 to 100. Okay. Let's move this stuff over a little bit. Oh. Okay. So this is our height so I'm just right clicking on it height and I like to highlight these because this is an important number slider that's controlling the height at the moment so I just used control G to highlight it okay alright so now I want to scale these inward okay 
I want to make them smaller. So I'm going to add a scale. Okay, so, and I'm going to use a control knob for the factor. Okay, so you see, you see what's happening. Um, so that's around a scale of one, and then when I scale it down, it's scaling it to the origin, to the center of the drawing. So I need my center of my scale. So this is, you know, if I was in class, I like this moment because this is when I can ask students, so what do I need to do? What, how, if I want this to scale about the center of itself, not the origin, what do I need to do? And then I'll get the smart student that says, uh, you need to scale about the center of those. And to do that, you can use an area capsule. Okay, so now with this, which center do I want? I want the center of of those, the ones that are highlighted in green. So I'm going to plug that into the geometry, and then see I get a centroid, and then my centroid is going to become my center. Okay, so now you see what I'm looking for. I I want those smaller triangles. So let's going to reorganize this. So I don't want to see those. Okay, so there I have my smaller triangles. So I'm going to be lofting from the bottom to the top triangles. Okay, so now, now let's look at loft. Okay, so if I use the loft capsule, it's I want the bottom curves, which are, these are my original bottom curves. Okay, and then I also want so you see something wonderful happens there. We'll talk a little bit about that. And then I want the loft to the scaled curves. Okay, and then you're going to get an error. So this happens a lot. So let's go back and let's talk about what's happening. So right now when I plug in those that first set of curves, it tries to loft between these eight polyline curves. And then it then tries to connect to the next eight when I plug those in uh, and it doesn't quite work it gets an error sometimes it'll work it'll so it'll loft the bottom eight together and then the top eight we don't want to do that we want to loft from bottom top bottom top bottom top bottom top and so on so the way that we do that in grasshopper is we have to graft a tree right now this is a single list of eight reference reference polyline curves. So what I need is I need to turn that into a tree. So I'm going to use the graph tree and then coming out of that you'll see I have still have eight polyline cur polyline curves but they're in their own list list of one item each and then that will match with the the other list. Okay, so let's let's keep going. Let's keep working through this. So this one I can plug in all right, so that's that. Now I have this list, just like I had of the bottom curves. Now I have these eight polyline curves that are at the top, and I'm going to turn that into a tree. So I'm going to graph the tree. Okay, so coming out of this, I just want to make sure that these are the same. Okay, so let's see what happens here. All right, perfect. All right, and I do have uh, a really short video that, that basically talks about what we just did in a little more detail, and I'll put that at the end. It's about lofting and lofting with trees. Okay, all right, perfect. All right, so that's what we want. There's our, our lofted surface. All right, so we can control the heights raise and lower this all right this this is still wireframe which is fine we won't go to render view just yet okay so now there's also the, the size of the openings okay so I'm going to add a little scribble this is opening 
size. I can select these two. Control G. All right, so we have our our height and our opening size. I like the scribbles. Let's add a scribble here. All right, I can add it to the group. All right, so we have height, opening size. All right, let's keep going. So now I want to look at doing some smoothing, uh, putting a pattern on it. So we're gonna we're gonna jump over to Weaver Bird now. So I'm just gonna draw a not so straight line here. Okay. Give it a little dashed. How about some color? Okay. Whenever I hit the check mark, it jumps over to my other window. Okay. So now we're gonna we're gonna add some smoothing to it. So uh, as I mentioned, I have the plugin Weaver Bird. It has these mesh subdivision routines in it. Uh, so it's looking. If if I bring out one of these, I'll bring out the Weaver Bird's Catmull Clark subdivision, and it's looking for the input to be a mesh or curves, mesh or closed curves. So right now, coming out of my loft. I have surfaces, so I have to convert my surfaces to meshes. So I'm going to use B rep mesh, or it's actually mesh B rep, create a mesh that approximates B rep geometry. All right. So even though it says lofted surfaces, uh, they're not quite B reps, but it'll let me know if it can't convert. Okay, so there we go. Let's start hiding things. So if I click on this mesh B rep and then I use Shift Control I, it inverts my selection. I can right click, choose preview off. All right, so now I'm looking at this this uh, actually pretty good, pretty nice looking mesh. And we can talk about how I can change the resolution, the size of these quads. Right now it's all broken into quads, uh, which is great. Uh, we might lose, oh, there's some triangles in there. Okay, so it's between triangles and quads. So let's look at now smoothing that. All right, so let's see what we got here. All right, so that's hidden for some reason. Okay, all right, so now let me hide this one. All right, so the only thing that I have displayed is this Weaver Bird Catmull Clark subdivision. And what what I don't like here is it is separated now. You're seeing the smoothing. It, they're pulling away from each other. I want those to be connected. So if I was teaching I would ask my students how do I how do I join that? And some smart student would say, uh, there's a B rep join. Okay, in Rhino, which in Rhino it would just be a join. All right, so let's plug that in. Let's plug our B reps in here. All right, it doesn't like doesn't like this here. It's going to tell me, yeah, of course. And then that same smart student is going to tell me that you're you're applying a B rep join after they've already turned into meshes. So you got to switch the order of these. So you got to join the B reps first. Then, then you got B reps and then turn those meshes into B reps and then plug this in. All right, let's see what we got. Okay, let's hide. Let's hide this one. All right, let's see. It doesn't look the way I want it because they're not joined. All right, they're not joined. They're not joined because I have a tree structure coming out here, and I need that to just be flattened. All right, perfect. I don't need a tree anymore. I need it to be a single list, and that's why it's it's important to understand data trees and work with data trees in 
um, grasshopper. So now it's joined into one smooth element and there's levels of smoothing. So let's take a look. Let's let's do this. Let's add a a custom preview. Alright, so let's hide this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Alright, so there are levels of smoothing. Right now this is set to level one. If I place if I uh, add a number slider that's level three, you see it gets even smoother. So some smoothing there that we could look at. And that smoothing also changes the mesh resolution as well. Like how many, it only goes uh, one, two, three. It's like how many openings. Okay, we'll look at another way to do that too. So let's leave that at, at one. Okay. All right. So let's let's now these become openings. These are going to become our our pattern. So if we go back a slide or two, yeah, that's gonna this is going to become our our pattern on the form. Okay. So let's do that. Let's add the pattern. All right, so I'm going to keep moving this custom preview over and adding adding capsules in between. Okay, so uh, there's something in Weaverbird called a picture frame. So we're going to place that in here and then plug that in. Okay, so let's keep hiding these as we go. All right, so these you're seeing are openings now. And there is a uh, a distance. Right now it's set to five, so that's five feet because we're working in feet. So I'm going to double click and I'm going to type in 25 is probably way too much. Okay, so all right, so you see that it's controlling the pattern size. Okay, so let's add a scribble. Group this together. Okay. Let's get in just a bit closer. Okay, so so small values there's 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 really no offset so it's a bigger opening and then larger values there's more offset and it's a smaller opening okay so we got that working for us all right so let's let's go back now because I have I want to be able to control how many how many openings I have and right now I have this set to level one so this will only increase the amount of openings you see that's increasing. Oh, I dare I dare go to three and risk the crash. All right, so let's say I want less, so I want less openings. So I can do that. I found this just recently, actually, this summer. I taught a, I taught my summer class advanced modeling, and a student had a question, and they sent me their file, and they had plugged in the the a, a capsule to the settings for the mesh B rep, which I thought was awesome because I would always r right click on here and go to set mesh options, and I would work within this mesh parameters. So they basically found a capsule that is this mesh parameters. So I can go in here and I can go to B rep B rep settings. I think it's just settings actually. It's kind of that's the reason I never found it, but I should have realized that I probably could go to mesh and I don't know where it's at, but probably somewhere in here. So someone's at home going, scroll over it, press alt, alt and function, no, alt control, press alt control and then you'll find it. Yeah, I was in the right place. So under mesh utilities, there's there are uh, there is settings somewhere in there. 
Okay, there it is. Okay, and there's some other ones too. So that's that's definitely worth knowing and looking at. All right, cool. All right, so I'm not gonna look at all those, but I know what I'm looking for though is I'm looking for this this um, minimum count. For whatever reason, that's that's what controls it. So if I say I plug in five. Okay, so now I have less less openings, uh, which is helpful. All right, stay stay around five there. So we're starting to get a lot of parameters that that we can control, which is the beauty of Grasshopper. Okay, almost there. So what do we need to do? We need to give this some thickness. So let's let's go ahead and do that. Let's give it some thickness. I'm gonna I'm gonna add my I'm gonna add a plane here. I have to remember that I want to go back and add some triangles. I think it's important to see that even after the fact that we can add some triangles. So Okay. This is pretty cool. All right. So now we can we can do some smoothing on the openings. Right now they're they're a little bit rectangular and they're they're pretty flat. So we can still go in into Weaverbird and we looked at Catmull Clark subdivision. I'm going to look at so that made quads there's one called loop which makes triangles so triangular subdivision so I'll go ahead and plug that one in. and I keep just hiding what we've done before alright so you see some level I'm going to hide this too some starting to see some smoothing on that Okay, and as we saw before, so I could set up a number slider. One less than three. Okay, so at three, you should start to become almost almost circular. I know you're barely seeing that, right? I didn't I didn't mention like when this was wireframe. Some of you at home might be saying I don't see my mesh edges so if you don't see your mesh edges um, control M turns those on control M M is M for mesh and grasshopper alright so now you can start to see the level the level of smoothing there alright let's see what else we want to do with this I'm going to take this back down to one. I want some bigger, bigger triangles there. All right, so I'm going to adjust my opening size. That's the top opening. Now, anyone who's watched my videos knows I'm a big fan of of multiple values creating multiple values so right now you might be saying well that opening size it's controlling all of those so I could add a knob for each one I could create a series or range but basically I don't have to use one scale factor I also don't have to move them one height okay right now they're all being moved one height okay so I'm remembering now what I want to do because they look really thin I want to give this a thickness Okay, that's that's missing. So again, using using Weaverbird, I can do something called a mesh thicken. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off. All right, so it's pretty thick, pretty thick to begin with, and that's 
happening through the distance here. That's a distance of 5. So I'm going to try 1.555 to get some decimal points and a number slider between 0 and so now I'm between 0 and 10. So now I'm getting some some thickness to those. And I want to reduce I want to reduce the amount of triangles. So that was happening here. Okay. All right, so, so you got this one here. It's pretty squished. This one small one is pretty squished in here. So let's let's look at how we can how we can uh, change this. So if I uh, if I look at my triangles, I'm going to pick everything here. All right, so now I have some points here. Sorry, again, I'm going to pick everything here. And I think it would be helpful to not see the grasshopper definition for a second. Okay. Let's hide this plane. Okay, so here's here was the issue. And I'm I'm gonna make this if I make it rendered. Ah can't do that. Okay. I was just trying to get rid of the grid for a second. I will just turn it off. Okay. That was F7. Turns off the grid. Okay, so we were having an issue here with a small little triangle. Alright, if I select everything and turn my points on, I, I just need to make sure that I, when I'm picking that, I'm doing a window selection. All right, so I'm going to add some more, some more triangles to this. So, typing in polylines, snapping to those endpoints. To this one. making something more interesting. Try that one again. All right, it's just making sure that everything's connected. All right, so now when I bring Grasshopper back up, I just need to reset these curves. You see everything's orange here. so. Just right clicking, set multiple curves, pick them all again. Alright, so now you get this more of this stretched out suspended suspended form. It's a little a little more exaggerated than, than what I began with. Alright, let's uh see some shadows there. Alright, pretty cool. So I I like this because it's just from again, just triangles. Just making these forms from triangles, so you can do a lot of exper experimentation and form finding by changing the shapes of those triangles. All right, so if you're a student, I hope you're about to have a really good school year. I know it's going to be, you know, more challenging than than usual uh, for all of us. So hopefully these videos will help you. And if you find these videos helpful, let me know. Give me a like. Uh, add a comment down below. And Click on these links that are popping up to the other Weaver Bird video and also that Loft video. And I will see you next time.